Chat GPT is so yesterday. Auto GPT is the biggest breakthrough in AI. This is a post almost every LinkedIn influencer is sharing these days. And Auto GPT has completely blown away a lot of people and then it is gaining popularity. In this video, I wanted to explore Auto GPT's good sides, which a lot of people have already explored. I also want to tell you what a lot of people do not tell you about Auto GPT. So this is going to be not a very positive push about Auto GPT, but also things that you need to know about Auto GPT. Let's get started with the video. The first thing is this is the post. I mean, like you can see LinkedIn influencers. Auto GPT is the biggest technology breakthrough ever. The next big thing in AI. Like this looks like really amazing copy. Like if I ever have to come launch a product or run a company, I mean, this kind of copies can really help. And it's not entirely false. I'll be honest. If you have seen my auto GPT video, if you have not seen my auto GPT video, I strongly encourage you to go see. This is one of the earliest autonomous AI or GPT for experiment that we saw. And since that it has been growing in popularities, you can see how many like 13,500 discord members, 74,000 GitHub stars, and um, everybody has been talking about it. Like you can see the demo where you can go give a character to this auto GPT and then give a problem based on the character, based on the problem, the goal that you have set auto GPT is going to solve it for you. A lot of sponsors. This project is completely off the chart. Like in fact, for the matter that this project is more popular on GitHub than PyTorch. GitHub stars or vanity metrics, I completely understand. A lot of people do not necessarily take or say that the GitHub stars directly mean anything, but I think it means the theme around which people are quite interested, the programming world. So you can see PyTorch. This is how PyTorch's star growth is. And AutoGPT was launched here. And then it has already exceeded 74,000 stars. And one of the primary reason is auto GPT has attracted a lot of people who are outside the deep learning world. If you see PyTorch, people who know deep learning or people who knew machine learning, they wanted to get into deep learning. They know PyTorch, they know TensorFlow and uh, auto GPT is into a completely different world. Even web developers are talking about even people who do not know anything about deep learning or machine learning are quite interested in that. Auto GPT is quite good. A lot of applications have been built with auto GPT. In fact, you can see that auto GPT not only can solve a problem, like you, you give a problem like solve world's hunger and it can come up with a list of steps that it, it should do. Auto GPT can write code, debug its own code, and then write another code iteratively do like how a human programmer would do. Like we usually write a code, find the problem in it, do unit testing, fix the code, write a better code. Auto GPT can recursively debug, develop and self improve itself. This is quite amazing. And in fact, like it has not escaped the eyes of Andre Karpati, who is right now part of OpenAI, but previously part of Tesla's self driving initiative. So what did, what did he say? Like next to frontier of prompt engineering, in my opinion is auto GPTs. One GPT call is just like one instruction on a computer. They can be strung together into programs, use prompt to define input and output device and tool specs, define the cognitive loop page data in and out of context window. Just run. Looks so simple and amazing. And it's not even an overstatement. I would say, I think we are human beings usually um, are very va va It's valid that human beings are excited about auto GPT. Uh, there is not a problem. The problem starts with a lot of aspects. So today we are going to discuss about such aspects about what is not good with auto GPT or where auto GPT is lacking or why auto GPT is not the next biggest frontier. I understand that generative agents, like when I spoke about generative agents, I clearly said, this is mind blowing. Like when you have multiple agents talking to each other, getting up in the morning, brushing their teeth, talking to the wife and kid, and then going to work. This is like mind blowing stuff, like West world stuff. But auto GPT is definitely not there yet. And I would like to tell you why. First of all, I would like to bring your attention to something quite important, which is cost. So if you see, this is a blog post from Gina where they recently highlighted the, highlighted the cost issue. Auto GPT typically takes about 50 steps for to do anything. Let's say you give a problem. It usually takes about 50 steps. A lot of people also say that it doesn't do in 50 steps. We'll come to that later. But auto GPT takes about 50 steps. If you have got, let's say GPT-4 uh, APA access and uh, you want to do a normal task, I'll link the blog post in the description. So I'm not going to get in the details for one step. You can assume that it is about like 28 cents. Okay. The, the calculations you can see. And uh, if it takes average 50 steps, that's about $14. 
So you tell AutoGPT that I want a website, uh, let's say I want a landing page for a food delivery company. So you can expect approximately that it is going to take $14 approximately. Now $14 is not a big amount. Like if you hire an intern or you go to Fiverr, you go to Upwork, you hire a freelancer, you are going to pay a lot more money. The problem starts when you want to customization. Now you want a customization on top of it. Now you're going to spend another $14 approximately. You want another customization on top of it and you're going to spend more money. So the problem is it's very expensive at this point. Like when you talk from, from a pure large language model perspective, when you do, look at open AI cost or any other AI cost, I think auto GPT is quite expensive at this point and it is too expensive to complete even a single task. So in terms of cost efficiency, it's not efficient at all. It's, it's not there. It's uh, it's quite far away from where it is ideally supposed to be. That's the first problem. So cost is a biggest problem. The second biggest problem that I would like to highlight when you actually try to use auto GPT in your daily life, you will hit a lot of roadblocks. For example, Timothy Allen has tweeted saying, so I used it multiple times, which is uh, referring to auto GPT. Here is what I found. It never completes a task. Maybe this is an overstatement. It just always finds a reason to dig deeper and do more research. It never gets to a point where it actually completes a single goal requested. I let it go for hours, LOL. And you can see people saying much like most of us. And then, you know, uh, some other response and some somebody else has said exactly this. Even when I requested it to stop and write a report with the completed task, it just kept on going. So now the problem is it's not just auto GPT is exciting. Auto GPT is definitely exciting as an idea. It's an exciting prototype. It can actually take us forward in a way how we make AI agents, but auto GPT in its current form is not like chat GPT. You can like at this point, even though chat GPT hallucinates, I can literally go to chat GPT and I can expect, oh, I want to write a blog post about implications of chat GPT in the education industry. I can give the title, get a response from chat GPT, but I do not expect that from auto GPT because when I upgrade my thoughts that I want to use auto GPT, I'm not going to ask auto GPT to write a blog post that I can do with chat GPT in itself. I, I want to do tasks that I cannot stand alone, do within chat GPT standalone. And that's why I go to auto GPT, but you can see that auto GPT messes up a lot. Like it doesn't uh, finish the task. It doesn't finish the task in uh, the set of number of steps that you have given. It doesn't listen to you properly. And in fact, like in sometimes people actually have ran out of their API tokens as well, because these things actually run continuously. It, it designs the list of tasks and then it tries to execute it. So it might go quite a long list and then it may not even achieve the goal that you want. So it's quite a hit and miss at this point and it requires a lot of fine tuning, not, not in terms of model fine tuning, but fine tuning in how we approach it. I think this is quite common with every new technology, but this is an important thing for us to acknowledge that auto GPT at this point is quite a hit and miss. Now the biggest problem, like in fact, like what Andre Kapati said is that this is uh, the next frontier. Like you can just literally do this and then run it. But the problem is how do you protectionize it? Like uh, that's another important aspect that Gina has highlighted. Once again, I link the blog post in the YouTube description so you can directly check it out. I think the pro how, wh why would you protectionize or how would you efficiently protectionize something that can run in infinite loop? I I think that's that's a billion dollar question. A lot of people would be answering that question. And uh, this is where when we build systems, we need to know how the system is going to be vulnerable, what kind of attacks it might take in. And because you're connecting a really large language model, like which is quite powerful with internet and with a lot of, uh, you know, let's say web hooks and the APIs and asking it to do things. For example, will you trust auto GPT with your stock market information? Will you give credentials to it and then ask auto GPT to do trades for you? I, I don't think like a lot of people would be privileged enough to say that I, I will be happy to do that. I mean, like people who have lots of money might do it, but I think a lot of people would be like, including myself, I would be skeptical, quite skeptical about taking any kind of advice from it, let alone letting it do uh, things that, um, you know, automatically. So I think autonomous agents are quite excited in, um, in, in the future that we are going to see autonomous agents can play a tremendous role. Like I am a big fan of autonomous agents. If you have not seen, I have a dedicated playlist for autonomous AI agents. We have covered baby AGA. We have covered auto GPT. We have covered generative agents where, you know, there is a game called the Sims and then there are 25 agents who can talk to each other. I've covered almost every single thing in autonomous agents, but I would like to tell you that auto GPT is not the next biggest thing in AI at this point. It can definitely grow. You can see the growth. Like in fact, 
if you see the github stars you can see that this kind of exponential growth is like amazing like pytorch is something that exists for a long time but auto gpt has gone beyond the machine learning and deep learning community so in terms of familiarity in terms of fame auto gpt is quite good a lot of people know about it a lot of people are talking about it a lot of people are porting the code from python to javascript and a lot of things but it does not exist in a space where chat gpt is today i think that's quite fine but that is something for us to remember because when influencers tech influencers start talking about such technology media starts capturing about it they think that you know this is um, uh, this is like out of the world it cannot be replicated in fact if you see baby aj i think i like baby aj architecture more because you get more control but in terms of auto gpt also baby aj the, this this smaller group of autonomous ai agents that we are talking about where you just define a goal and then ask ask them to dig deeper for, for you and then give a solution i think they are still not there yet and the reasons that we discussed is cost production issues and reliability uh, like do you trust that system and then do something also because it's not consistent it's it's quite a hit and miss and people don't like things that are not very consistent i mean hackers are always interested in when i say hackers like people who try to hack things together like put things together like the early adopters would be always interested in it but this is not a solution which is like a drop in replacement of the next version of chat gpt where you can literally go and then ask it to solve a problem for you i just wanted to put it out there a lot of people have been talking about auto gpt but i thought i should also do the other side of the auto gpt and then you know let you know what i feel about and what what is happening with auto gpt let me know in the comment section what do you think about it have you tried auto gpt what is your opinion about it see you in another video happy prompt